definitely. This is a dependent circumstance. Let's try one more, see if you really get the hang of this. Maybe, maybe two more, let's do it on your own, okay? Uh, try one with replacement, one without replacement. Let's say probability of selecting a I told you we had fun. So these problems are going to look identical. You really have to know with replacement, without replacement, dependent, independent. You've got to know that. Figure those out. If you're done with that already, I'll give you one more kind of challenge problem. That's a jacket diamonds. And we're doing that one with replacement? No, without. Do it both. Do it with and without. suit, four cards, uh, four of every specific card. One card, one number per card per suit. So like there's only one jack of diamonds. Bless you. Oh, here's some homework to pass back. Make sure this goes around quickly. Oh, well, I'm not All right, let's discover what we got out of this thing. So with replacement, you're going to notice that with replacement doesn't affect your probability. So if you're always putting the card back, this second part is honestly, it's irrelevant, right? If you're always putting the card back, it doesn't change anything. So with independent events, if it's with replacement, it doesn't matter. So what's the probability of selecting a queen, given that you selected a queen, if you've replaced the queen? Good. Yeah, there's still four queens because you put the queen back. There's still 52 cards because you put the card back. Did you get that? Good. Let's try this one. What's the probability of selecting a queen, giving you selected a queen without replacement? So you selected one card, it was a queen, you put it away. I say, what's the probability you're going to get your next queen? Three. Why three? Ah, you kept that queen out. 51, you kept the card out. Good job. You got that one right. That's great. That's fantastic. Hey, could I keep going? Could I say, find the probability of selecting the queen, after selecting the queen, after selecting the queen, after selecting the queen? Mm -hmm. It'd be only one out of 50, whatever you do. You'd count that down. This concept can be extended. How about the probability oh, of selecting a heart, given you selected a jack of diamonds? I can't ask you what's the probability of selecting a heart, given you selected a jack. Because jack, you don't know. Was it a heart? Was it a diamond? Was it a club? Was it a spade? So I had to tell you a specific suit. So with replacement, what's the probability of selecting a heart given you've already selected a jack of diamonds? With replacement? 52. You've replaced that card. 
Good, there's 13 hearts. Out of 52 cards, because we put that jack back. Now, let's say we don't put the jack back without replacement. Probability of selecting a heart, given you selected a jack of diamonds. Jack of diamonds. Why 13? There's still 13 hearts. We took out a jack of diamonds, right? So we didn't touch the hearts. There's still 13 of them. How many cards? Could you do this if I said that was a jack of hearts? It would change the probability, sure. If that was a jack of hearts, you would have 12 over 51. That's right. So probability stuff, as long as you're keeping with the dependent and dependent, you know what replacement without replacement is, you should be okay with this. I hope you'll feel right with what we talked about so far today. Good. Good. We're ready. We're ready for the multiplication rule. Now, when we're going back over this, here's where we're going to start. When we look at this thing, can you tell me, is there a way to get from one half and one fifth to one tenth? Have you seen that? Sure. Here's what we did when I drew that, that diagram for you. Honestly. The purple one? When we when I drew that diagram, I drew uh, true, false, and I had one, two, three, four, five options, one, two, three, four, five options. So for every choice I had here, I had this many choices. So for a true, I had five choices. For a false, I had five choices. So essentially what we did is we said, I've got two choices for the first one. I've got five choices for the second one. Combined with each other, that gives me 10 total choices to choose from out of my problems, right? We said we could do true A, true B, true C, true and so on. And we could do false A, false B, and so on. That gave me 10 choices. How many of them was the right choice? Only one of them. That gave me a probability of one out of 10. If we think about it differently, we go, okay, well, I can do the same thing with the probabilities themselves. If I look at this probability and this probability, we'll notice the one-tenth is simply the one-half times the one-fifth. That's how we do this. That's the multiplication rule. It says if you have an and probability, what's the probability of getting both of these right, this one and this one? What's the probability of selecting a guilty and a not guilty? Multiplying our probabilities. And that's going to lead us to the multiplication rule right now. Are there any questions on this before I erase that? We'll move back over here. So the multiplication rule. Says I want you to find the probability of A and B. By the way, A and B, this and, is this in a single trial or in successive trials? What is that? In this context, this is in successive trials. The single would be at the back end of the or probability. So what this means is A and then. A and then B. That means successive trials. A and then B. Well, here it is. In order to find the probability of an and, pro an and problem, so probability of A and then B, we do take the first probability. A happens first. Probability of A. So in our, in our question up here that we had before, the Audi question, we have one half. That would be our first probability. Times how many choices you have for the second probability. So really, all you're doing here, folks, you're taking the number of choices you had for the first, first event and multiply it by the number of choices you have for the second. Because for each choice you have on the first event, you have that many choices for the second event. The true A, true B, true C, false A, false B, false C. So we, that's a multiplication problem. So we are multiplying by event B. There's only one more thing I have to tack on there. You notice I, I'm missing a parenthesis here, and here's why. Here's why. Watch the board here very carefully, please. I'm going to show you something. This works if your events are independent, like they are for the dice, like they were for our two, first two questions. Because A does not affect B. 
you take the total outcome here, multiply by the total outcome here, you get the total for, the, for both of them together in the and probability. However, is it possible that A can affect event B? Yeah, we just saw that right, right here. Without replacement, it affects it. So we have to say not only is it probability of A times probability of B, it's probability of A times the probability of B given that A has just happened. But remember, remember, if these two things are independent, what's this equal to? So that, yeah. So, but remember, if independent, probability of B given A equals the probability of B. So then this probability would simply equal the probability of A times, well here, it would be the probability of B. I need you to check that on the board and raise your hand if that makes sense to you, why we're, we're getting two similar things here. Why we have this one, if they're dependent, well, A's going to affect B, and independent, well, A doesn't affect B. And we know that if they're independent, this is the same as this. Um, I, I usually just stick to this one because you're never going to screw that one up. Uh, if they're independent, it really doesn't make a difference, right? So we're going to really we're going to use this formula all the time. I just want you to notice that if this is independent, you just stick with the probability of B. That's why I have that up on the board. Are you clear on that one? Yes, sir. Yes. We have fun yet? Yeah. Just live. Yes. This <laughs> awesome. I love this stuff. Hopefully you do. Hopefully you're having fun. Would you like to try a few examples to kind of flesh this thing out in the last 10 minutes or so? Yes. The answer to that question is always yes. That's right. Of course you would. We've got a bag of marbles. Some of you probably think I've lost my marbles. Have you heard that expression before? Yeah. Okay. Good. I think I'm getting older because some of my expressions, like pinch pennies, People are like, lost his marbles? I don't know. Because the guy was crazy, right? Because he lost his marbles. And he couldn't fly. It's a bag of marbles. Here's what's in your bag of marbles. Three red. Two blue. Four green. What we're going to do is find the probability of selecting green and blue. We're going to do this one with replacement. We're going to do the same one without replacement. After that, I'm going to have you try a couple on your own. Find the probability of a red and red. Uh, with out replacement. 